Talking 24. A health and information podcast from NHS 24. Hello and welcome to Talking 24, the podcast where we talk all things NHS 24. I did just think there, though, that um, that makes it sound like this is going to be the longest podcast in the world, that we're going to be talking non-stop for 24 hours. We're not. We'll chat away for about 10 minutes or so. When I say we, I mean me, Lisa Dransfield, and my colleague, Lynn Huckabee, who's going to introduce herself in a second when she's just put a cup of tea down, which I know you've got tea. I don't have tea. Well, you promised wine to get me into this room. I'll uh, <laughs> remind you. <laughs> I didn't promise <laughs> wine. I just said... Maybe we should imagine we're drinking wine. Not that I want anybody to get the wrong impression there and think that Lynn and I just drink wine all the time because we don't, because obviously we're professionals. And uh, I'd rather eat cake. Would you? Yes, I would. Cake and wine. That's even mm, better. Not a great combo. Actually, we're not conveying very good health messages here, are we? So let's move <laughs> on quite quickly. <laughs> uh, Lynn Huckabee, tell me what your job title is, because it's quite a posh one, isn't it? Well, I am Director of Service Development. What does that mean? Okay, so I'll have a bash at telling you to what I think that means. It's a fairly new role within the organisation. Um, I was appointed last June. And actually, for me, it make, it's a strong signal for the organisation to make a commitment around change and transformation. The organisation is a young uh, organisation. 16 ha- years. 16 years, which has, you know, evolved over, over that period of time. And, you know, now with our new... Um, technology platform, we have fantastic opportunities to to really drive forward change, not only within NHS 24, but in support of the wider system. Let's just take a step back then for a second. So so your job really is about driving change and and, and, and making different services and, and, and the services that we do do, do them in a different way. We'll, we'll come on to that in a second. But you said NHS 24 is young, 16 years. Yep, we're, we're still... Um, uh, young in, in, in the 70 years history of the NHS. But we've always changed, haven't we, as an organisation? We, we've, we've never stood still. So we started off as just doing telephone triage and then we quite quickly started to, to provide services on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. So NHS 24 has a number of other services um, which, which deliver support, health and wellbeing information and support to people through our NHS Inform, for example, through our symptom checkers and our uh, services directory as well, along with a range of other programmes, projects of change that are really, you know, it's about supporting the public to to get the right information at the right time and to be uh, supported through through the relevant services. And even a service like NHS Inform, which is which is our kind of premier sort of online service isn't it it's it's where we keep all of our health and care information and you mentioned the symptom checker there's a services directory on there that that's changed hugely hasn't it and you you've been heavily involved in that haven't you yes uh nhs inform was first launched in 2010 um and at that point was very much a scottish government commitment to delivering a single national health and care information portal and we developed that, designed that with what we thought was was the right thing to do. Um, massive learning across a seven year period, which actually changed our perception of how we design, develop, deliver services. So through that redesign, we actually engaged with people who use those services. Shock horror. So you ask people? Yeah, we absolutely ask people, you know, about what they want to see from um, that service um, and actually radically redesigned the service. And as a result of that, we are the growth around that, that channel is exponential. You know, pre-2017, we had about 40,000 users access that service per month and we're now offering that service in the millions. It's, it's, it's really quite incredible, the power of engagement and collaboration uh, to making sustainable, fit-for-purpose services. But, you know, it doesn't stop there either. It's not to say, tick, you know, we've delivered a fantastic service. We know we have. However, it's about how you then continually evaluate, develop and continue to provide that service that is fit for purpose. That that makes sense to me. I mean, people have got devices in their hands almost all the time and, and obviously they're searching for information. And we know that people will search for all kinds of information. 
Uh, and we know that people use the internet to search for health information. In fact, we went out on the streets of Glasgow, actually, earlier this week and asked folk um, if they actually do search the internet for health information, Google symptoms and so on. Here's what they had to say. If there's something wrong with me or, or one of my family members, uh, I consult with Dr. Google. Just type in whatever symptoms I've got or my family members have got into Google. Have you used like the NHS um, online thing before? Are you like... Yeah, and look up your symptoms and see what you need to do. Google is quite a good way of giving you an indication. Um, so yeah, I would I would use it from time to time. I suppose yeah. Um, I'm quite lucky that I keep well. You know, I don't really have much, but I, I suppose I have looked up symptoms. Uh, sometimes I Google. I think the NHS is one of the first ones that come up when you when you Google your symptoms. And if I was to, I would read that one first rather than any kind of any ones after that. So the people of Glasgow confirming that Dr Google is in fact a thing. So it's right and proper that the NHS provides a, a trusted and, and, and assured um, source of health information. It makes sense to me. But um, it, looking at it in the broader context of, of the NHS in Scotland, why is it really needed? I mean, it, can people not get information any, anywhere else? Is, is there a big gap? So let, let's take it back a bit. So NHS celebrated its 70th uh, birthday last year. Now, I've, it, it's, a, it's a service that is, was a fantastic post-war innovation, um, one which our worldwide health partners are envious of um, and one of which we are very proud. I've worked in, in the NHS for almost 30 years, she says, muttering under her breath. Um, and actually... The service, you know, at a broad level hasn't changed significantly. We've tinkered down the edges. We've undertaken improvement programmes and fantastic results out of those, but very niche, very focused uh, improvement programmes. And I think we've got a fantastic opportunity with the new digital health and care strategy, which was launched last April. In fact, on my birthday last April, Happy birthday to you. That was your present. <laughs> um, to, to, to really bring about a significant level and fundamental change to, to the people who use our services. Um, and that for me is really exciting um, because that is about truly providing services once for Scotland. Um, and coming back to your point, we, we also haven't embraced technology you know, we're all very well used to having devices attached to our, our pockets um, and we use them all the time. In fact, I think, it, well, to me, it feels like my right hand's cut off if, if my mobile isn't there. Um, so we need to embrace that technology to, to mirror how people are using that in their everyday lives, you know, to book holidays, to do shopping, to order a pizza, you know, whatever. Back to the unhealthy food scenario, apologies. So really bringing about the opportunity we have with technology that is there with what people need, you know, really engaging with the people who use, but importantly, who don't use our services. You know, I think there's significant barriers to the way our, our services are currently designed that, you know, by taking a different approach to how we deliver our services just opens up the opportunities for people to access services in a way that they want at the time they want. So it's, it's about speed, really, isn't it? It's, it's a lot quicker to find health information with a few clicks on your, on your mobile phone. I mean, we're, we're a 24-7 um, society. We expect things when we want them. Um, fortunately, our branding of our organisation is NHS 24. We should be delivering services, you know, across, across that, that spectrum. 24 and, hours and, a day. Yeah, 24 hours a day and not just niche services, all our services. Can you just explain a bit more about GP triage? What, what's that? In uh, Lothian, we are working collaboratively with uh, Musselburgh Practice uh, for patients who seek same-day appointments. So there's a significant demand there for, for same-day appointments where people think, actually... It's when you phone they, up at 8 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, you phone up at 8, eight o'clock and, and you think you need to see the GP at that point. So our process of triage is enabling us to actually uh, divert people to the most appropriate uh, 
point of care. So self-care outcomes, including our symptom checkers on NHS Inform, including pharmacy. And we've driven down, consistently driven down the demand for for self-care to about 30%. So let, let me just try and wrap my head around that, you know, what does that mean for, say, I don't know, a dad of two kids lives near, you know, that's his practice. And um, he decides that he needs to see the doctor that day. So he phones up his GP, but actually he gets to speak to somebody at NHS 24 and they take him through our triage using our um, software, our algorithms. Mm-hmm. And then he's directed to the right care that's, that's appropriate to his, to his needs. Absolutely. So what is demonstrated is that um, for... Uh, more complex patients, uh, the GP has been able to expand their traditional appointment slot of 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Um, So it's freeing up GP capacity. And we know that that's becoming a scarce resource. Um, And it'll help with stress for GPs themselves, won't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In addition to that, as part of of that programme of work, we're supporting Scottish Government around what they call care navigation. So that's about upskilling uh, practice receptionists and practice managers to effectively na- navigate um, care at the point of contact. So in some ways, it, the, the package of care here is, is absolutely about the redirection and appropriate, appropriate response at the right time for individuals. Ideally, what we would like to see in the future, my vision for NHS 24 is that it's a virtual health and care Uh, service that people can access the right service at the right time when they need it to get get the response they need. Yeah, that all makes total sense to me. And it's all about sustainability, isn't it? Because people aren't aware of the range of services that are available to them. And um, we are um, creatures of habit. It takes us a long time to, to learn new ways of doing things. So the more people are made aware that their pharmacist can help with a whole range of conditions, for example, uh, the more likely they are to use them as their first port, port of call. If anybody's listening to this and they're interested in finding out about some of these changes and, and maybe getting involved even, I suppose they could do, couldn't they? You, you, you mentioned talking to the public about their view of services. Is there any way that they can do that easily? Absolutely. We have a, a team as part of the, the directorate called our Stakeholder Engagement and User Research Team, all very grand again, but essentially that that is our team who will absolutely engage with the public, engage with groups and communities to really drill down into what what people need, what people want from our services. Not to say we can promise and deliver everything, but actually gathering those insights is really critical and really important to us. Fantastic. So it's, it's all about, in summary, um, it, it is about change, but it's also about sustaining and securing the NHS. Without a shadow of a doubt. We know the challenges across the, the system with an ageing workforce, recruitment and retention levels. And fundamentally, the way people want to access services is just different now to how it was 70 years ago. Um, and, and we need to make our services fit for purpose first off. And then the sustainability comes through that ongoing engagement and collaboration with, with not only our, our public, but our staff are really critical to that too, because they're the ones that are on the front line delivering those services and our partners. Um, absolutely. As you said at the beginning, exciting, challenging, but exciting. exciting. And the more people that get involved, the better. So I suppose if anybody's listening to this and wants to find out some more about the the work of NHS 24 and um, the sorts of services that we provide and how you could get involved, um, I'd recommend that you have a look at www.nhs24.scot. And Lynn, the NHS Inform site really is the first portal call for health and care information, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's available at www.nhsinform.scot. Lynn Huckabee, thank you. 